Welcome to the Freedom is Dead, Long Live Freedom podcast. I'm Tony Assassin, and this is the third episode in the series. This episode is called Digital Enlightenment. As we rush headlong into marriage with machines, are we not forgetting something? That something being our humanity. From checking out the memes that reverberate throughout society, we are being told continually that we are so flawed as conscious creatures that we desperately need to interact with machines so that we can realize our full potential. Is this true or are we being had? I'm going to put it to you that we're being had on a massive scale and the propaganda is working with next to no opposition. Just look at the crazies queuing rapidly for the next new iPhone at the local Apple shop. There's clearly something wrong with this picture. Look at the zombies wandering around with no thought for their own safety as they stare vacantly at two-dimensional reality on a screen. Look at the stress on their faces when their iPhone or tablet is not in their hands and heavens forbid if it's been stolen or it's lost. We're surrounded by digital contraptions that take us away from the physical universe and immerse us in a two-dimensional virtual reality. We are journeying towards transhumanism. It's a war against our own humanity. Now that seems a little harsh, doesn't it? But is it? In many ways, I'm pro-technology. I've used computers for nearly 30 years for research and writing and as a tool to produce music and a bit of video. I don't join in very well with social media as I can't get excited at all with virtual friends. And I'm very private about what I eat. I don't need to advertise my food intake in the hope that I can get a dopamine hit. The point that I'm making is that my interaction with with technology is about using it as a tool and not simply as an entertainment or communication device. The transhumanist though believes that technology is an essential for every part of existence and the idea of simply being a mortal with no technological superhuman additions keeps humanity tethered to nature as though nature were the enemy. This rather sad and pathetic point of view has a long, long history. That history being as long as civilization itself. Underlying the transhuman push to reach a godlike state is religion. It all began when religion promoted the journey from matter to spirit. 6,000 years ago, the majority of the human race were hunter-gatherer and therefore of the material, physical world. As the masses were brought into civilization's arms, kicking and screaming, they began the journey towards the body of light or spirit. Spirit only means without body, like without a physical body, and it doesn't really have any other meaning, although we've been conned into believing that it has some kind of divine implications. 
The entire journey from matters of spirit has used the flowery, descriptive language of religion in all of its forms to convince us that it is good and righteous to attain spirituality. But no one mentions what spirituality really is. It came to me as technology advanced over the last three or four decades that spirituality could indeed be a digitized consciousness, i.e. a consciousness created out of magical numbers that would exist in many ways outside of the physical universe. This goes against what we've been conditioned to believe that spirituality is. But the more I place my thoughts on the subject, the more I could see that I could probably be right. Transhumanism is one of the steps towards the goal of the immortal digital consciousness. From the beginning of the digital age, we've seen humanity that was already starting to, to divorce itself from the physical world become estranged from the material dimensions. Many are already dreaming of singularity, not knowing the truth about what that will mean to them. The idea that technology will improve in any way you or me is a position that hasn't really been thought about properly. If I drive a state-of-the-art automobile that has some amazing technological features and is super fast, have I become a better person? If you need help with that question, I can tell you that without doubt driving that car does not make you, and it wouldn't make me, any more improved. Take the car away and we will not be any faster than we were before we drove the car. We are simply using a technological tool to get from point A to point B faster than if we used our human legs. Taking that idea a step further, if you had a computer that was connected to the internet, giving you access to huge amounts of data, and I didn't, would you be an improved version of humanity than I? Once again, the answer is no. You may have access to knowledge at your fingertips, but reading something from the net means that you are simply reading from the net. An incredibly stupid person, as long as they can read and can open a browser on a computer, can have access to incredible amounts of data. But most of the people that I know use that computer to access Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. And unless they are one of the few that still has any interesting thoughts going on in their heads, that might need that incredible amount of data. The computer stays as a form of communication and entertainment, nothing more and nothing less. Many of the digital wonders that are appearing in our lives are being sold to us as tools to help disadvantaged people. For example, if a person loses a limb or two, having a robotic limb or two would be brilliant. But to transplant someone's limbs so that they may become faster or stronger is another thing entirely. Sure, there's an amount of people that would gush at the idea of being faster or stronger, but once again, they would not become improved within themselves. They would be utilising technology that would allow them access to certain superpowers. And think about this. If you did have a couple of robotic arms that were super strong, 
it wouldn't be usable unless the rest of your body was robotic. Using super strength would tear the human parts of you up. The stresses and strains of your robotic add-ons are not compatible with the human parts that you are attaching them to. Your robot legs may be able to run at 100 miles per hour, but one little slip up and you're dead, unless of course there's no human part of you left. And just to help you understand this desire that you may have to become super, the fact is that you are operating from an egotistical reference point that unfortunately is being manipulated by various mass media sources for an elite that only see you as a guinea pig. The elite have for over 30 years been preparing us for the insertion of a microchip. Hollywood movies, science fiction books and comics, and of course well-placed articles in the press that promote the idea that the insertion of a microchip is the best thing since sliced white bread. But as we should already know, sliced white bread processed bread is pretty crap to say the least. One of the main reasons to roll out the incredibly dangerous 5G is to get us all attached along with our kettles and fridges to an artificial intelligence. Not for our benefit. The elites know that the entire journey to singularity is fraught with danger. But as we are the cattle that will face that danger, who cares? They don't. The full implementation of the microchip will only be fully activated when 5G blankets the entire globe and there is a suitable AI to connect to. The AI is to become a god in all but name in much the same way as you are the god of your body. The ancients expressed the idea that a way to understand the Godhead is to understand yourself. As a human being is the microcosm of the macrocosmic deity. Saint Bernard of Clairvaux, an abbot in the 11th century, 1090 to 1153, who was instrumental in the rise of the Knights Templar, stated that to understand God, you would need to understand proportion, weight and measure. If we take this idea one step further, we could theorize that the universe could possibly be the body of the Godhead. Ray Kurzweil, a creative director of Google, and one of the leading proponents of transhumanism claims that within the next 10 to 15 years all life on this planet will be connected through nanotechnology that will connect to an AI thereby creating a sentient planetary god and then nan nanobots would be sent into the universe so as to connect the entire universe thereby creating the mind of a god of gods. There's a massive elephant in the living room that's not really being mentioned and that is whether it's a universal mind of God or a planetary mind of God. The Godhead will not have compassion or empathy and will certainly not attain any wisdom. These three human attributes manifest through a cocktail of knowledge, experience and existence within the material universe. Without pain and discomfort that occurs in the material world, why even dream that compassion and empathy would exist? Magic sigils do not inherently contain compassion and empathy. The human that uses these sigils may possess these altruistic attributes, 
But even that's dependent on whether they have arrived at a certain level of wisdom. Numbers are sigils that are representative of diverse dimensions that when commingled become our humanized concept of reality. One of the highest magics in Kabbalah is the creation of a golem. This is a creature in the form of a human but does not have a soul. This creature is created through a very long ritual that consists of using the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Each letter has a numerical value, so in other words, the formula is digital. The ritual takes about 35, 36 hours and is incredibly dangerous, but if concluded, a body of light is constructed. If this body of light is to be animated into this realm, a human form made out of clay is moulded and then the body of light is poured into the form. This creature can act as human but is not fully human. It has no compassion and empathy. It's a soulless, digital consciousness. This is the immortality that the elites are chasing after. Numbers are tools to control in one of their incarnations and so they are to be used in connection with the majority of the human race. Once the microchips are inserted into each and every one of the human race, we will soon come to see that they are not simply aids to a better world. In fact, they will be used to control us. We will simply become the physical interfaces for the godlike artificial intelligence that will have its own agenda. Technology is not a pathway to becoming an enlightened person, as many think. In fact, it's the opposite. The more that the AI will invade our minds, the less we will be individual and independent entities. We may be granted abilities that we can only imagine at present, but then, then those abilities will never truly be ours. Whatever happened to our own self-development? The development of the human mind, body and spiritual soul. We now seem to be relying more and more on technology to help us. But the fact is, that the digital arena is about control and all of its gifts come at a cost. We will lose our humanity, be controlled and lose any abilities that we have ever had as human beings. Scientist Robert Lanza believes that our consciousness does not die with our physical body something we may all be happy about. But what does this mean, really? Not so long ago, Professor Lancer turned his attention from regenerative medicine and research on stem cells and began to concentrate his efforts on physics, quantum mechanics and astrophysics. The three disciplines taken on the name of biocentrism and he posited the idea that consciousness was really not contained within the body but a part of the multiverse. The theory states that there is no death and that we, we believe in death because of our belief that consciousness re resides in the brain and so when the body falls apart through the myriad of possible physical deaths we really die. But the consciousness being attached to the multiverse ca carries on within the parameters of the countless other verses. Believing that immortality lies only within this universal paradigm has the elites at the apex of our constructed reality directing the energies of the human race 
towards the creation of a digital consciousness. It's possible, though, that they will only create a golem-like creature, as the soul will reside elsewhere in the multiverse. The golem will also be controllable by the artificial intelligence that will be the godhead of this reality, as the golem is a creature created out of numbers and electricity. The true development and enlightenment that is possible for all of humanity may have nothing to do with the digital arena and be a lot more analog, so to speak and encompass the countless realms of the universe. The digital holographic universe is one that will always be controllable by outside powers, whereas the conscious soul may be truly immortal and free. And if we truly want to become enlightened, then it's to our own soul that we should look and not towards any digitized virtual enlightenment.